Look upon Caesar. What sayest thou to me now? Speak once again. Beware the Ides of March. He is a dreamer. Let us leave him. Pass! Pass! Welcome, everybody, to the ANS series of Greatest Coins. I'm Dr. Lucia Carbone, ANS curator of Roman coins, and today I will be presenting the Eid Martinarius, a coin celebrating the assassination of Julius Caesar. Only 80 authentic specimens of these no coins are known, two of which are part of the collection of the American Numismatic Society. But let me give you some context for this coin. This coin was issued by Marcus Junius Brutus, one of the leaders of the plot that led to Caesar's assassination on the Ides of March of 44 BC. The year of its production, 42 BC, is quite relevant as well, as it was the year of the Battle of Philippi, where Brutus and Cassius, the leaders of the Caesaricides, were defeated by the heirs of the Caesarian party Mark Antony, and Caesar's adopted son, Caius Julius Caesar Octavian, the future Emperor Augustus. Let's begin with the description of this coin. Um, contrary to the norm, I will begin with the reverse, which at first sight seems much more revolutionary. On both sides of the reverse, you can see two daggers, and in between the daggers, you can see a cap, a Phrygian cap. Now, the Phrygian cap was worn by the Roman slaves when they were freed, when they became liberti, so freed slaves. So the combination of daggers and Phrygian cap means precisely this, freedom through tyrannicide. So the enslaving at Rome had been freed by the tyrannicides through the daggers representing the assassination of Julius Caesar. The model for this was quite likely represented by the statue of Armodius and Aristogaton, the two Athenian men who murdered the tyrant Hipparchus in 514 BC. Their statue was put on the Acropolis of Athens and they were represented holding daggers. Also, the Phrygian cup that we can see on the reverse of this coin is still associated to freedom, as it is clearly visible on US coinage. For example, it is visible on the obverse of the Gobrecht dollar of 1839. Their liberty is portrayed while holding a so-called liberty pole with a Phrygian cup on top of it. So really, the Phrygian cup is a representation of freedom. Then let's analyze the legend here, Aid Mar, Aidibus Martis, on the day of the Ides of March, March 15th. March 15th was an important day in Roman calendar because it was the day in which debts were paid and also was the day celebrating Anna Perenna. Anna Perenna was an Italian vegetation goddess, and she represented the renewal of vegetation, the beginning of a new life. She was also said to have been the sister of Dido, the Phoenician queen who committed suicide because of her unrequited love for Aeneas. But anyway, assassinating Caesar on March 15th of the day of Anna Perenna linked the assassination of Caesar to the renewal of life, to the renewal of vegetation. So the Caesaricides through the assassination of Caesar to the murder of Caesar were ushering Rome into a new age of freedom, into a new life. 
Let's now focus on the obverse of these marvelous coin. Here you can see the portrait of Brutus. In spite of the fact that Brutus wanted to be considered a liberator, he followed here the iconographic tradition initiated by Julius Caesar. Before Julius Caesar, no living person was portrayed on Roman coinage. A partial exception to this was represented by Titus Quincius Flamininus, who issued a stator in 196 BC to celebrate his victory on the Macedonian king Philip V, Achinos Kefale, in Greece. However, Flamininus' stator was quite certainly issued in the eastern part of the Roman Empire and an only a very limited circulation in Italy. Thus, Julius Caesar is really the one whose portrait had a lasting influence on the iconography of Roman coinage in the years to come. Then let's focus on the legend here, Imp. Imp stands for Imperator, a win in general who celebrated a triumph, a triumphal parade. The first time this title was used on a coin was in 90 BC, in the course of the social war, the war fought by Rome's former allies against the Romans. This was because the Romans refused to grant them the Roman citizenship. In that year, Gaius Papius Mutilus, the general of the anti-Roman forces, put on the obverse of his coins Mutil Embratur, the Oscan version for Mutilus Imperator. Oscan was the language spoken by most of the Italian people in central and southern Italy. Thus, the first time the title Imperator was used on a coin was in an anti-Roman fashion by Rome's enemies. The winner of the social war, Lucius Cornelius Sulla, put the same title on his coinage. And after Sulla, both Pompey and Caesar used the title imp. And very significantly, Mark Antony used the same title on coinage in 43 BC, right after Caesar's assassination. This is to say that Brutus chose to respond to Antony's claim by putting the same title, Imp, on the coin. At the same time, he put himself among charismatic leaders of the likes of Sulla and Caesar, the same ones that put to an end the glorious history of Roman Republic, according to him and the other Caesaricides. And now I will focus on the other part of the legend, which is El Plaet Cest, Lucius Pletorius Cestianus. This was the name of the monier. This was perhaps the only non-innovative part in the iconography and in the legends of this coin, this specific coin, because we know that the names of the moneyers uh, of the Triumviri Monetales had already begun appearing on Roman coinage in the second century BC. Now that we have described the iconographical significance of this coin, it is worth spending a few words describing the tumultuous years between Caesar's assassination in 44 BC and 42 BC, the year of the final showdown between the Caesar sides and the leaders of the Caesarian party at Philippi. On March 16th, 44 BC, the day after Caesar's assassination, it was decided that no one should bear malice against anyone else. This is what the Roman historian Cassio Dio said, tells us. So an amnesty was decided by the Senate. But the truce didn't hold for long. On March 18, 44 BC, 
the contents of Caesar Testament were made public. Caesar had left to the Roman populace his splendid gardens by the river Tiber, now in Trastevere, and had given 120 or 300 sesterci, according to different sources, to each Roman citizen. To give you an idea of how big this donative was, imagine that this was the equivalent of four to 10 months of average soldier pay. And the amount of money left by Caesar was enough to keep a family of four well fed for over one year. And after this, after this was made public, Antony delivered his famous speech where he lauded and praised Caesar's love for Roman people. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears! I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it was so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here on the leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man. So are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honorable man. After Antony's speech, a mob began to look for the Caesaricides with the intention of killing them since they killed Caesar, who was by then a benefactor for them. So the Caesaricides had to flee Rome. At the same time, Caesar's corpse was seized and buried in the Forum in the place where Caesar's adoptive son, Octavian, would later build the temple to Divus Julius, the the deified Julius Caesar. Brutus and Cassius fled to the east, together with several of the conspirators, while Antony and Octavian began their tumultuous alliance to avenge Caesar. The people of Rome thus rejected the Caesaricides, who liked to portray themselves as liberators. And even if Brutus and Cassius succeeded in killing Caesar, they were not able to stop his innovations, which led in just a few years to the establishment of a monarchy in Rome. This coin, the Aedmar Denarius, was issued in the eve of the Battle of Philippi, the last battle ever fought by Brutus and Cassius. In its design, as previously said, It bears the novelties introduced in the previous decades of Roman Republican history. The reverse, through its daggers and Phrygian cap, symbolizes the freedom obtained through Caesar's assassination. But the obverse, with Brutus' portrait and the title Imp, shows that even Brutus had to surrender to the innovations introduced by Caesar. This coin encapsulates the contradiction of the motives of Caesar's assassins. On one hand, they wanted to bring back the ideals of the Roman Republic, while on the other hand, they adopted the imperatorial style introduced by Julius Caesar. For all the complexity of its iconography and its historical significance, the Eid Mar Denarius is one of the greatest coins in the ANS collection. Thank you.